Hi, I'm Nikki Humphrey, a veterinarian with the Swine Health staff. Our current director is Alan Huddleston. Our assistant director is Corn Custer. And the other veterinarians on my team include John Corslin, Celia Antignoli, and Ross Free. Today we're going to discuss the specifics related to the swine portion of your cooperative agreements for fiscal year 2020. So for 2020, we really want you to try to focus on risky behaviors in your states. Um, we want you to continue your ongoing state level activities and reporting. And then your, for your PRV and swine brucellosis targeted surveillance, we want you to look at you know, uh, operations where they, you know they have close contact with uh, feral swine. Maybe they do a lot of movements, they feed garbage, those kinds of operations. Um, as most of you are probably aware, we started ASF surveillance this year in, or last year in um, June, and that was combined with our uh, previous CSF uh, surveillance program. So if you haven't started collecting samples for that and have questions, definitely reach out. We also want you to continue your Swine Health Protection Act search and enforcement activities. And then if you are a state that is dealing with a lot of FMD, SVA, vesicular lesion investigations, um, work towards trying to alleviate as much as you can, um, I guess, the hangups or the um, issues that you have with plants where you're seeing high volume. And whatever you have to do, you know, we're allowing some use of cooperative agreement funding to try to minimize the um, impacts on plants there. So this graph depicts um, 1987 swine operation uh, in the swine operations in the U.S. versus 2012 operations. Um, you can see we've really changed our industry structure in the past uh, 30 years, and this information comes from NAS census data. So first, we'll look at the number of operations in 1987. There were a, a little over 240,000 operations with. Um, the majority of those being both medium and small operations. And in 2012, and it's pretty, pretty much still accurate today, there, there are about 60,000 or so operations, um, so a 75% reduction in pork producers. And um, they're uh, mostly small producers with uh, around 40,000 of them making up the small producers. And then larger producers make up around 10,000. Um, but you'll see in a second here that those larger producers are the ones um, contributing the larger majority of the swine. So in this slide, you'll see inventory has risen from about 50 million head to about 65 to 70 million head now. And a large portion of the inventory in big herds over, is in big herds over 1,000 head. These operations typically have good biosecurity and present low risk for disease in our um, surveillance purposes, I would say. And most risk is in the smaller herds where there are more, uh, a lot more producers, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And these um, herds may have uh, a lot of feral exposure or a lot of lower biosecurity practices and a lot more movements than some of our commercial herds. And uh, these are the herds that we'd like you to target in your cooperative agreement surveillance sampling. So why are we targeting? It's mostly because we can't afford to test everything. We want you to target sick pigs um, or at, in places where you know they have at-risk practices, so a lot of mixing of swine, um, movement of swine, uh, any fomites that might come onto the premise from even if, um, whether it's garbage feeding or just like show type operations that are going to a lot of shows and having exposure to other premises and then bringing you know, their equipment back. And then, um, as I mentioned before, location. So if they have feral uh, swine contact. And as far as networks go, we want to know our companies. If companies are mixing pigs or shipping pigs frequently, then those will be good targets as well. Now we'll look at specifics in the VS Field Operations Grants and Cooperative Agreements Guide. And pages 25 through 29 of this guide cover swine-specific areas. That's what we'll concentrate on over the next several minutes now. And it covers what the swine staff feels are important areas to focus on in these cooperative agreements for 2020.
Swine staff has five items to emphasize within these agreements. The first is that every state has to conduct some level of active surveillance. This includes activities to look for African swine fever, classical swine fever, swine brucellosis, pseudorabies, and influenza in swine, whether your state is the largest or the smallest swine producing state. The second item is to perform Swine Health Protection Act activities as required by state and federal regulations for disease prevention, including active searches for illegal garbage feeding and submission of monthly swine health protection activity reports. I want to emphasize here that even states that prohibit garbage feeding are required by the Swine Health Protection Act to conduct searches for illegal garbage feeding and to report those on the monthly basis. The third item is to um, submit annual swine activities reports and to, com to continue to do uh, searches for ethnic undocumented swine production. So in areas um, of urban and suburban areas, you may end up finding where people are um, growing swine in their backyards and we want to know about those as well. They probably present some risk for garbage feeding and maybe importing um, pork products illegally that are going un um, unidentified. And then training and response for swine foreign animal disease activities. And then continue monitoring markets for ID and premise reporting, as well as advanced relationships with producers, swine veterinarians, swine labs, and associated industries within your states. Note that states may not utilize swine health funds for the purchase of laboratory equipment. And the fifth and final activity that we um, hope to have under goals this year is reporting and expected outcomes. And um, you can enter collected data for various swine programs and surveillance activities into the appropriate data repository as specified within this uh, state federal cooperative agreement guidance. That includes using SCS Core 1, that's mostly for pseudorabies and swine brucellosis surveillance. Um, and then we have a new system, the comprehensive lab submission module that we're using for ASF and CSF surveillance. And we want you to use that both for the active ASF CSF tissue sampling that I'll discuss later, as well as for the CSF serum um, samples that you're collecting that are being sent to the FADL um, diagnostic lab. And then you'll use EMERS for capturing closeout activities or non negative uh, swine um, brucellosis and pseudorabies cases, and as well as for traces and any FAD responses that you conduct. So new within the past three to four years, swine staff has been working to move towards more targeted sampling of high-risk herds when sampling for pseudorabies and swine brucellosis. And what we're asking is for states to assess within state industry structure and develop relationships with higher risk outdoor production operations and their processors to develop sample collection protocols for pseudorabies and swine brucellosis serology testing in those at-risk herds. So this chart illustrates why swine staff developed the um, SBAS testing. Back in 2012, we were doing somewhat random testing of all sows, which can be seen here in this pink and gray bar. So you can see we were testing a lot of swine that were not from high-risk herds and were mostly commercial high biosecurity pigs. The only high-risk pigs being uh, tested were a very small percentage represented down here on the graph um, that just happened to be selected among the lower risk pigs. So in 2016 to 2017, uh, swine staff with the help of SIA developed new surveillance where we cut back on random testing and started SBAS testing, which is also known as alternative surveillance of high risk herds. Testing still occurs at the Kentucky laboratory. Samples are differ differentiated on the VS form 4-54 by indicating that SBS by indicating SBAS on sampling form when shipping these samples to the Kentucky lab. It's important that you indicate that so that it shows up correctly in our uh, results um, and reporting at the end of the year. This targeted surveillance gives higher chance of targeting high-risk pig populations. A 
So we um, have representative coal cell surveillance next. And <clears throat> with this SBAS testing, the state requirement dropped from 5% to either 1% to, one to 5% based on a state's risk. <clears throat> Swine staff assistance setting up selection and through algorithms and lab and the laboratory monitors uh, sample submissions through SCS and LTE. Everything is pretty much managed at the Kentucky lab. Um, there are a few very large plants that have collection contracts at this point. Uh, otherwise, most of the samples are collected through an FSIS um, agreement as well. <clears throat> Just to mention that um, at this point, more, this is more of a national function, and so not as much a part of the agreement process, but we do want you to continue monitoring and reporting for your states. This table shows uh, SBAS targets by state. In the recipient guidance document, you'll find the targets on pages 26 and 27. In general, targets were set for each state based on swine population within the state and risk for contact with feral swine populations or level of backyard production, which swine staff feel is, a, is in general a higher risk activity. The total target is about 9,000 samples nationally. And if you feel that um, your state is either underrepresented or overrepresented in these targets, feel free to reach out to swine staff. Um, SBAS specifics, so targets are targets and not requirements. Uh, communicate with your AVIC with, uh, and with swine staff, if you, again, if you feel that they're inadequate or not um, appropriate for your state. Shipping, testing, and reporting are all covered by the Kentucky Lab provisions, so you don't need uh, cooperative agreement money to ship or test. And state costs are related more to making contact with the producers in the markets to get the process, sample process set up. Um, state testing, if um, your state chooses to do testing within its own laboratory, uh, that cannot be supported out of cooperative agreement money. So we've had a CSF sampling for a little over 10 years now, and recently, as I mentioned earlier in the slides, um, added African swine fever sampling as of June 1, 2019. As you look at where you want to sample, we have four streams that we'd like to target. Those include garbage feeders, backyard higher risk herds, coal markets or buying stations or other markets that are um, moving high volumes of pigs and maybe reselling and um, mixing pigs. And then FSIS slaughter condemns with reasons that are consistent with hemorrhagic disease. If you, um, we want you to assess animal ID compliance related to samples collected. And if you can't really trace samples back to farm of origin, you probably shouldn't be testing those samples just because they'll be a nightmare in terms of um, any positive results that might be identified. We want you to utilize the CLSM module that I mentioned earlier to collect the sample information for submissions assigned to non-labs. Um, if you need help navigating this new system, please contact Swine Staff. We're um, more than willing to do one-on-one -on -one training with each state that um, is using CLSM. Um, some other things, so uh, There are um, certain states that I'll point out in the next couple of slides that have tissue targets, but if your state does not have a target, um, you're still welcome to collect samples. And recently we've been seeing um, some increases in uh, dead on arrivals at slaughter plants or increases in certain condemns like septicemia and erysipelas, and we're not getting notified about those. But we feel that those would be good targets for some of this active surveillance um, sampling. So if, you're, uh, have if you have incidences of those kinds of, uh, in those kinds of activities in your state, uh, please reach out to the swine staff, um, and we'll be happy to help you get set up with some active surveillance in those plants. Um, we don't want to be missing any of those if we can, if we can avoid it. Um, for specifics related to this new program, we do have a swine hemorrhagic fever surveillance manual available, and you can get that in the link that's provided in the guidance document. Um, 
as I mentioned before, the CSF serum samples continue be, to be sent to a foreign animal disease diagnostic laboratory on Plum Island. And then the ASF and CSF tissue samples are to be sent to a designated non-laboratory. Um, those are listed out in the manual as well. If you have um, targets for your state, if you do not have targets for your state, then definitely contact swine staff and we can set you up with which laboratory you will be sending those samples to. So these are the new ASF, CSF tissue targets by state. Um, again, it's not every state that has a target, but if your state's not listed and you have uh, some cases that you think would be good, good um, candidates for active surveillance, then we're happy to work with you on that. And we also want you to remember to focus on higher risk swine where possible, so definitely those garbage feeders, again, coal sow markets and buying stations, slaughter plants receiving high risk swine. Um, the targets were initially set <clears throat> um, and are not um, by any means set in stone, so swine staff is happy to work with states to adjust targets as necessary if you have suggestion, suggestions or ideas on swine populations to target. Can you pause? So most of you are pretty familiar with the CSF serum sample targets. Um, these are just the uh, targets by state. Again, not every state has a target, but if you feel like uh, you need to be doing some CS CSF serum sampling, uh, just reach out to us and, and we can discuss. And this is mostly for those garbage feeder higher risk premises. Now we'll move on and talk a little bit about the garbage feeding and the Swine Health Protection Act. It's um, come under re renewed scrutiny, as most of you are probably aware, due to the threat of African swine fever. All states are required to search and report um, and think creatively regarding risky sources. So we talked earlier about those urban environments where they may be holding pigs in ethnic um, eth areas where there's a lot of ethnic folks living. So um, look at that. And then establish relationships with feeders to encourage reporting of garbage fed pig uh, high mortality events for investigation. Um, we probably should be doing those as fat investigations, although you might be able to set up some kind of active surveillance too if needed. And then um, all of this, uh, all of the searches and activities related to garbage feeding or the Swine Health Protection Act should go into that, into our SharePoint site. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions from swine industry regarding what we are doing about the threat of garbage feeding, so we want you to be vigilant in continuing to conduct these searches. And we have no metrics, metrics associated with sampling garbage feeders, but we definitely want to get them reporting mortality or disease events, knowing they will be getting follow-up testing for program diseases. And they can also be tested for pseudorabies and swine brucellosis, as most of you have been doing. Finally, the last area we want to emphasize in states dealing with high incidences of vesicular lesions, we know there are roughly six to eight states dealing with this regularly, is that we want to provide some financial assistance for states dealing with vesicular cases, often determined to be Seneca virus A. We recognize uh, foreign animal disease investigations are labor intensive and costly, so we want to allow limited usage of swine funds to supplement extraordinary foreign animal disease investigation related expenses in high incidence slaughter facilities only. This isn't a line item for every state. Um, it's only a line item for states dealing with high foreign animal disease investigations in swine slaughter facilities, and mostly those relate to vesicular lesions. Only thing I ask, or we ask on swine staff is that in return, you collaborate with VS Field and swine staff in analysis and recommendations for lowering SVA incidents through biosecurity and pig flow improvements. That wraps up swine cooperative agreement items. We want to thank you for your collaboration. The swine team currently has five members listed here with the addition of our new assistant director, Corin Custer. We look forward to working with you in fiscal year 2020. Feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions you may have related to swine activities.